Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Clinch. Uh, first episode in a few weeks, we've been in a drought, uh, a, a terrible, terrible drought with the new UFC. And I know I know my co-hosts here, Keith Robert and Dave Chicken Palmer Stewart. I know they're pretty torn apart about it. Oh, guys, what have you been doing in all this weird free time on Saturdays? Well, um, I had my honeymoon, which uh, that's why I couldn't be on the last show. I did catch it. Very good. Um, so I was in Florida enjoying the nice weather while you two were probably in the cold and suffering. Um, other than that, just been working every Saturday and just praying that there's some other kind of fights on. I know we had a Bellator card during this kind of um, period between UFC cards. We got to see uh, Bobby Lashley win, which was good because I'm a big wrestling fan. Other than that, just been working and just been living my life as a married man, I guess you could say. Uh, I, uh, MMA is my number one hobby, and I, uh, I've been in like withdrawal mode, or like I gotta get some help. I, uh, it's been, it feels like forever. Um, one thing I have been doing, because like I said, I really do have to get some help, is I've been, I've been <laughs> watching on Fight Pass the old UFCs, and I started at number one, and I just finished UFC eight. So I watched <laughs> the first eight UFCs and the ultimate. ultimate. Uh, so. That's how I pass my time. <laughs> uh, you found a way to fill it, and it only cost nine ninety nine a month. So there you go. <laughs> that was that, that was my little attempt at a plug. I know you're the man with them, but <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, let's let's hop right into Georgia St. Pierre. Um, what is what is going on? Uh, which which camp are you believing here? Are you believing the UFC side of this? Are you believing GSP side of this? Well, me personally, I mean, I want to believe George St. Pierre's side, um, but I'm, I'm actually probably believing uh, Dana White and the UFC side. It's, it's getting really aggravated. I mean, you've been hearing, I mean, I think St. Pierre's been, you know, this semi-retirement for three years now or so. Um, it, and we've been hearing rumors. We heard rumors of him coming back, UFC 200, UFC 205, UFC 206. Now, we're, you know, possibly early 2007. Now you're here in Bellator and different other organizations. Um, but either just announce you're retired or come back. I mean, you've, you've been hearing these reports that Aldo is saying that he's he's asked for $10 million. And, and, and Dana White said it, and, I, and if you really think about it, when Dana White said it, when, every, when George Sapia was in his prime, he wasn't crazy about MMA. Um, I mean, he's talked about himself. He had to see a sports psychologist and different other things. Um, so it, it, I can, I can understand where Dana White says that it's not in him anymore. He's been out for three years and this is just a, a plug to stay relevant. Um, I, I kind of believe it. And, uh, I don't know if we, if we, we got to talk about, I'll, I'll talk about later, um, different matchups he's been rumored against, but I'd like to hear what Dave has to say. I, I agree 100% with you. It's just, um, relevancy to stay in with the fans because, the fans that grew up watching him, maybe they're not around anymore. And the young fans that are coming up that are watching McGregor and, you know, are watching Max Holloway, and Pettis, and stuff like that, he's just trying to stay current with the fans of the UFC. And it's all just a – either it's just, um, just to be relevant, but just retire or fight. I mean, it's – they give you the money that you want. I mean, you're a legend. You're a Hall of Famer already. It's like – you guys can come within a certain price amount and be like, okay, I can take that. And if the UFC doesn't match it and if Bellator gives you everything, then go there. But either fight or just get off the pot. It's, it's, there's, there's only two options. It's either you, you stay retired and you, you maybe you open up a gym or you train somebody. Or take a fight in Bellator or take a fight in UFC and just make the money. But I don't think his heart's in it. It, it feels like it hasn't been in it in a while. The, the, the Hendricks fight, I feel like, was just is undoing. I mean, he won it, but, you know, that's here or there. So I feel like he should just stay retired and just um, live his life as one of the best champions to n never really lose the belt, really. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the thing about him is if you're a newer fan, like you were saying, if you got brought in the sport from McGregor or Ronda Rousey, some of that, you, you might not even know who George St. Pierre is or seen him fight. 
or maybe the last time you saw him fight was, I mean, obviously the last time all of us saw him fight was a John, Johnny Hendricks. That might be the only time you ever saw him fight. Um, <clears throat> so I can understand his need to, you know, want to be out there. Um, but he's on the contract with the UFC. So um, him talking about being a free agent, now I'm not a law expert, uh, <laughs> but I can't see how he would ever um, be able to fight in, U- and, in Bellator or World Series of Fighting or one of these just because the UFC owns his rights. I don't know the legal part. Maybe there's a way he can get out of it. But if he's demanding $10 million, there's only one organization that can give him that amount of money, and that is the UFC. So um, if he takes a fight with Bellator, it's simply because he wants an easy he wants an easy win and easy money. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with that. I mean, some some people just are money hungry now. I mean, if you can if they, if Bellator can give you say seven million, take it. Just 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 take it. You know, you, obviously the competition over there ain't great, but you know, you pick up the easy win, get your paycheck, and then you have another seven million dollars probably after taxes and stuff like that. Probably five or four point eight or something like that. Take it and just be happy the rest of your life. I, I don't see a way that they could give them that money. I mean, you got guys like Rory McDonald going over there and Benson Henderson, they're going over there, they're happy because they're getting six digits. I, I can't see them going seven digits. Um, I don't I don't know how they uh, you know, unless, I mean, basically Spike TV got involved and they, Spike TV basically gave him the money and said, hey, we're going to try to buy this guy and hopefully that makes us turn into a... Or pay-per-view buy rights. Give them you know, that buy right for the pay-per-view. Put that on pay-per-view and, you know, say, hey, you get this amount of percentage. If you say you're as popular as you still think you are, take the gamble. Yeah, I just, I don't see how St. Saint, Saint Pierre could, I mean, if St. Pierre versus... Krishnikov or Diego Lima or one of these guys, do you think that would really pull huge – I mean, you have to get the millions of dollars. you got to pull Ronda Rousey and, and Conor McGregor and Brock Lesnar numbers. And I, yeah. I don't see – St. Pierre in his prime wasn't pulling those numbers. St. Pierre going against Josh Koscheck and and uh, Tiago Alves and uh, even Nick Diaz, they weren't pulling – I mean, he was put some huge numbers to the UFC, but yeah. he never putting up McGregor numbers. But the UFC was different during that time, though. Back when he was fighting, it was the money really wasn't there as it is now. So you never know what could happen now if he fought. Just think about how much they were making back then. I know they had sponsorship money, but it's a whole different ball game UFC now to when he fought. You know, back then. So, so two of the rumors that we've been hearing um, recently, two breaking news that we've been hearing. One was a little while ago was was him versus Tyrone. Uh, Tyron Tyron Woodley was really close to happening. Another one was him versus Michael Bisping. Uh, how would you guys How would you guys match those guys up? How do you think he would do? I think he would beat. Um, I don't think he would beat Woodley, but I think he I think he would beat Bisping. I think he could beat Bisping. It would be a boring fight, but I think he would beat um, Bisping. The Lawler fight. I mean, the uh, Woodley fight. That's a different story because. Woodley's got power. I mean, if he catches you once, you know, you'll be stumbled. I mean, Carlos Condit caught GSP with a, with a nice kind of like low, uh, low, low kick to a high kick and, and knocked him back. And he started doing a little ground and pound when they fought. So, but I think Woodley would probably win that by split decision. But then again, if Woodley gets gassed after the second round, third round, GSP is just going to just ground him, you know, just get him on the ground, wrestle him. But I think he would definitely manhandle, uh, Michael Bisping for sure. Uh, you know, it's been Just, uh, so long since I've seen him fight that I, I can't, I can't really expect him to go in there and win in his first fight back in years um, against either guy. I mean, Bisping would be, he'd be more likely to beat Bisping in my opinion, but Bisping's having the best year of his career right now. So, I mean, if, if that counts for anything, you know, just the momentum of it. And, you know, Woodley, I, I think, is just a better athlete. And at this point in GSB's you know, career, where age is now a factor, and is, I mean, it's been so long since we last saw him fight again. Um, you know, Hendricks really had him all beat up, tattered. And I, don't, I don't know. I, I see him losing both, to be honest with you. Yeah, I was trying to look up George St. Pierre's um, age. I couldn't do it right now, but I, I think he's still in the lower 30s. Uh, 
We lost Sorry, sorry, I must be calling him again. 35. They won't call me, and they only call me. He's 35. So 35 is an age where a lot of guys are declining. Um, So uh, the thing about Bisping, um, I definitely – I agree with Dave. I think if he he was going to come back and he was going to win, I actually think Bisping would probably be the best opponent opponent that he could match up against. Um, The one thing that I would be really concerned would be the size difference. Um, Bisping obviously is a middleweight, uh, weight um, in his prime. Uh, he he, you know, last time I saw him, he was on the UFC tonight. He looks, uh, he looks kind of small. He actually said that he could possibly make. Um, but I just think about Bisping's age. I think Bisping's what 37, 38 years old. Um, his recent wars. I mean, he's been hurt. He got, you know, he got hurt multiple times by Dan Henderson. He got hurt by Anderson Silva. Um, he has that the damaged right eye where he's partially blind in, in his right eye. Um, he's slowing down. Um, but, I mean, with St. Pierre taking a three-year layoff, we, we don't really know what we have. I mean, this is a guy who's had multiple uh, multiple knee injuries, um, obviously age. Um, you know, I know all the reports saying, guys like uh, Stephen Thompson saying that St. Pierre looks like as good as he's always been. Um, but you hear that all the time. You hear that about B.J. Penn. B.J. Penn looks better than he's always been. Um, um, against... Uh, Thompson and uh, Wood, uh, Woodley, the winner of that. Um, I agree, Dave. Um, these guys are just – they're better athletes than Michael Bisping. Um, they both have uh, more knockout power. Uh, Woodley is a is a better wrestler. Um, Thompson's a more dynamic striker. I would be extremely surprised if he comes back and and uh, and beats one of those guys. But you know what? I, I'm really starting to believe. In, and I had a pretty credible sauce tell me that it was a done deal that he was coming back. Uh, and uh, – my sauce is wrong. That was a long time ago. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting pretty aggravated with him. All right, we'll change gears a little bit here. You guys were uh, – you mentioned Bellator earlier. Um, and, and to kick it to that side of things, we've got Fedor expected to fight early next year, uh, expected to fight Matt Mitrione. Uh, what do you got, how do you guys feel about that? Will we be tuning in? Oh, I mean, you got to tune in for that one. As one of the um, – I've actually seen Fedor fight live, and I actually saw one of his losses. So that's even more rare to see Fedor lose than Fedor win in his career. I saw it when he fought against uh, Bigfoot Silva back in the Strike Force uh, Grand Prix in uh, Jersey. I went to that. It was a, it was a great card. Um, Fedor hasn't fought in – the United States since like 2011 when he fought Dan Henderson. So I hope they, if this does happen, I hope they bring it to the States because I'm tired of seeing him fight, you know, Russia and St. Peter's, whoever, you know, now the Fedor is demanding money. That's all he's, he wants the biggest paycheck. And I think Bellator will give him that paycheck better than the UFC. Cause I think UFC thinks he's done. There's no, Maybe there's one more fight in him if he wins in Bellator. Maybe this is like a one-off deal for uh, Fedor. Just we'll see what happens. Because I don't see Fedor f- signing a three-fight contract with Bellator. I think it's just a one-and-done. And I actually like Matt Mitrione. Um, me and Keith, um, unfortunately, we saw Matt Mitrione's last fight in the UFC, which was against uh, Travis Brown, which his eyeball came out to like here. Um, very, very um, tough watching that. I've always been a fan of Matt Mitrione ever since he was on The Ultimate Fighter. Now, who I think would win that fight, that I, I – I'm hoping Matt Mitrione would win it because just because um, he's a, I think he's the better fighter now. I know he hasn't had that much experience, but I've always been a big fan of him. But then again, if Fedor catches you with that one right hand, you're, you're asleep. And uh, Matt Mitrione has been suspect to a chin, and he's been submitted before. But I'm going to go Matt Mitrione winning that if it actually does happen and the rumors are true that he's going to go to Bellator. But – Again, rumors are rumors. They may happen. They may not. But as a fight fan, this is one I would actually like to enjoy to see happen live. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we were talking about Fedor. I'm so sick of this guy. I, I, I'm, I mean, if I was talking about how sick I am of the, the uh, George C.P. I'm even more sick of this guy. He's been doing it for years now. I've been hearing about him coming to, to the UFC, I mean, to fight the best. Um, we've been hearing it since 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 Pride shut down. Um I feel like, um, you know, Dave made a lot of sense about him not coming to the UFC. I mean, UFC's not going to pay him huge money because who's he going to attract? He's going to attract the hardcore fans. That's it. The hardcore fans are viewing it anyways. 
I mean, I'm going to watch no matter what. Um, so I kind of feel like, like Fedor, to some people, he's done to ruin his legacy. I mean, this is the guy that has refused to fight the best for a long time now. And I know a lot of people say he's getting run by this man of a team, M1 Global, all these guys. And, and, and that's very well could be the case. But you know what? You're the product that you make. You pick who you want. The best. I mean, one thing about uh, Floyd Mayweather, that his criticism is that he's been dodging the best for years. And how's it any different than Fedor? Um, Fedor has not come to the he hasn't fought in the USA, USA in a long time. He's never fought under the UFC, under the USADA testing. Um, he's The last couple of years, he's been fighting absolute cans. Um, so I, it's just, I'm just sick. I mean, um, the, the Mitrion fight, I think Mitrion would beat him too. Um, I forgot who Mitrion just fought. He got knocked down. He almost got knocked out. Um, but he ended up making a comeback and winning. Um, I can't remember before. Um, but uh, Dave's probably looking it up right now. I'll look um, it up. And, and another guy that he was, another guy that he was recently rumored to fight was Shane Carwin. Yeah, yeah, that's a great fight. A guy that hasn't fought in six years and got destroyed in his last fight. And he's forty-one years old. And he had a major neck surgery. One of the big, uh, big cat, Dave. Ollie Thompson. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, everybody knows that. <laughs> yeah, gonna, I mean, Mitrion's a C-level heavyweight. But that said, I still think Mitrion will win that fight. What happened? I don't think Fedor's coming to America. I think it would, if it does happen, it'd be something where they're fighting in Russia. Um, they, uh, Justin, how do you feel about this? Uh, honestly, I I haven't been able to watch Fedor fight. I've, I've never, you know, I got into the sport much later. I've never seen him fight. Uh, Mitrione, I've, I've seen fight and like you said, sea level fighter. I'm not overly impressed with him. Um, so I, I'm not really sure. I'd watch out of curiosity. I don't really have the background to really develop much of an opinion on it. All right. So let me tell you, let me tell you a thing. Now, this is, this is probably going to be a while, but let me tell you a thing about <laughs> Fado. I've, I've watched practically his whole career. And, and, and at one point, I was a huge fan of this guy. I was I, I thought this guy was the best fighter in the world. I thought he was Tom Paul King, even at heavyweight. Um, I thought he was like the cyborg, indestructible. Um, and and, uh, and and this thing about this guy is that you, you, you never know how good he is because of who he's fought. He's, I've seen people rank him. Uh, number one, number one fighter ever. And as soon as someone see, if I see anybody rank Fedor a top three fighter of all time, I instantly think they're brain dead. Because if you rank him over John Jones, and Silva, George St. Pierre, when you rank him over one of those three guys, it, just to me, you're just an amateur in MMA, um, or you're just a Fedor fanboy. Um, <clears throat> this guy's record um, is thirty six and four. Now, I he, he's always a little bit of an undersized heavyweight. Um, he. He obviously was always great. He had great hand speed. He was great at closing distance. He had great ground and pound. Very slick jujitsu game. He moved like a middleweight. Um, but he was undersized, and he had very poor wrestling technique. He, he got taken down by a lot of wrestlers. Now, he's 36 and 4. But if you, if you break down his, 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 uh, his record, it's a lot. It's, a lot, it's pretty deceiving. He has, out of his 36 wins, he's got 14 wins against guys that you either never heard of or an absolute freak show fight like Hung Man Choi and Zulu Zini. And, and this was the guy fighting his guys at the end of his career holding on for paychecks. This was in his prime. This is when he was the, the pride heavyweight champion. I mean, if you break down his record, starting all the way back to Ricardo Arona, he fought Ricardo Arona, a, a, a one-dimensional um, middleweight who was undersized middleweight, and, and most people gave that fight to Ricardo Arona. Um, then he, he went in and he had a loss to TK by cut. So we'll, we'll just – I mean, that was very quick. We'll, we won't talk about that. So that was one of his losses. Probably should, should have been a no contest. His next his next win was against uh, Babalu Sobral, a B-level light heavyweight that ended up moving to middleweight. So another guy that he had a big size advantage on. Then he then his next uh, notable win was against Sammy Silt, a, a guy, yeah, he, he he's impressive because he's seven foot tall. But this is the same Sammy Shelf that before that lost to Yuki Kondo twice. A seven-foot guy losing to a middleweight, a, a C-level middleweight. Um, his next big win was Heath Herring, which is, if you if you break down Fedor's record, it's probably a top three win in his career. But uh, who, who, who is Herring beat? Who, who did Herring beat in his, in his prime? He, he beat up a washed-up, steroided-up, addicted-to-painkiller Mark Kerr and, and an extremely undersized Igor Vochanchin. Um, 
I mean, then his next one, his next win is obviously his best win, um, which is Antonio Nogueira. I'll talk about both, both those wins together. He beat him twice. They both, he, he dominated both fights. Um, they actually fought three times. One was a, a rule of no contest was because of an accidental headbutt. Um, but yeah, they both, they fought twice. It's definitely, I mean, Nogueira's a legend. That's definitely his best win in his career. Um, and he dominated. Then his, his next big win uh, was K- Kazuki Fujita. Fujita has a 15 and 12 record in MMA. The best thing that, Fujita was a pro wrestler known for having a heavy head, big head that could take punishment. That was, that's what he's known as. He could, he could take a punch. Um, his next win, Gary Goodrich. Gary Goodrich has a 23 and 23 record in MMA. The guy actually has brain damage from all the, the effects of getting beat up and hanging on too long. Uh, his next win was against Mark Coleman. Mark Coleman's 16 and 10 in MMA. When he fought Fedor, after he fought Fedor, he went two and five for the rest of his career. And he fought Mark Coleman in 2004, four years after his prime. Um, then he fought again in 2006, six years after Mark Coleman's prime. Um, then he fought Kevin Randleman, a one-dimensional light heavyweight who's 17 and 16 in MMA and who actually, as a light heavyweight, picked up Fedor in, in, in probably one of the craziest slams you'll ever see. He like, was suplexed at him and then jumped in the air at the same time, and, and I thought Fedor almost died. Um, then he fought uh, uh, Nao Ogawa. Ogawa had seven pro fights in his time when he fought Fedor, and not one significant win when he fought Fedor. And this is when Fedor is the, is the heavyweight champion of the world. Um, then he fights TK, who, who you know, to revenge his, his cut loss at the time. TK lost five, five of nine fights heading up to that Fedor fight and was about five years past his prime. Um, then he fought for Krokop. Now, Krokop was, was definitely his probably his second biggest win in his career. He's been six in the UFC after, you know, after that. So he's got, he's got a losing record in the UFC and, and got caught for, uh, for PEDs. Um, after that was Mark Hunt, which at that time, Mark Hunt sounds like a big name to have on your record. But at that time, he was virtually just a kickboxer that um, was in the middle of a six-fight losing streak when Fedor fought, fought him. And, and if you watch the fight, I remember watching it. On, I had it in my house, a pay-per-view. Um, Mark Hunt was beating him at points. Um, in the first round, he, he, was, he was winning the fight before Fedor uh, uh, got him in a Kimura when, uh, when basically Mark Hunt gassed out. Um, his, and that was his last fight in Pride. He goes on to uh, – uh, I can't remember if it was Bodog or, or what was next, but he was fighting in Russia. Basically, he was fighting his hometown. He fights Mark uh, – sorry, uh, he fights Matt Lindland, a, a one-dimensional wrestler uh, who was a middleweight. So he's two two weight class difference between them, and and Matt Linlin, um got a body lock on him and was taking him down, and and Fedo grabbed the ropes and, and to keep himself up and get top control and then I'm submitting him because he landed on top and got him in a submission. But the only reason that was even allowed was because it was in Russia. If they was in America, they would have restarted that, or they would probably would have gave Matt Linlin the top position. Um, his next big win was in when he was in Affliction and and he he beat Tim Sylvia, which obviously you know beating the UFC. A uh, former UFC heavyweight champion looks good. Problem is that from that point on, uh, Tim Sylvia went eight and eight from from the time he fought Fedor. Right? Tim Sylvia was done. Um, in that eight and eight run, he, he got knocked out by Abe Wagner and, and Ray Mercer. He got knocked out by one punch by Ray Mercer. Um, if you go if you go on after that, I think he fought Andre Alowski. Um, Alowski was beating him when Fedor knocked him out. If you go back to that, yeah, Alowski looks like a pretty decent win. Alowski lost four fights in a row, and he got knocked out three times in that run when he when he fought Fedor. Next was Brett Rogers. Brett Rogers, he went it was ten and ten after he fought Fedor. Include and, and if you go back to that fight, there was times where Brett Rogers was, was teeing off on him. Brett Rogers had him against the cage and was beating him up. Um, his next, and then that's when Fedor goes in his losing streak. He goes against Fabricio Verdum, a legit uh, top not uh, heavyweight, and he gets submitted in the first round. He goes against Antonio Silva. A B level how the way Antonio Silva knocks him out. Then he goes against Dan Henderson. Dan Henderson, a middleweight, um, uh, knocks him out. Um, then he goes. Then he goes. He comes. He makes his comeback and he goes against one dimensional Jeff Munson about five years after his prime, and wins a extremely close fight. Um, he goes against Satoshi, uh, Satoshi Ishii, who had five pro fights at the time. Then he beats Pedro Hizo about ten or twelve years after Pedro Hizo's prime, and then and then finally his last you know named guy he beats Fabio Maldonado. A, a light heavyweight that actually was talked about going down to uh, middleweight, and and and, a, and he won a fight that most people scored a draw, and he was he was on ice. So, uh, I all that I said all that just to say that I think Fedor Emelianenko is the most overrated fighter in the history of MMA. Very nice, very nice. 
All that said, Keith, I think I just moved them up to number three. <laughs> 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 you find out. I know I do that whole big rant and uh and, and my my phone uh the mute button got hit. <laughs> I know you didn't see the phone move my left. <laughs> and none of us cared to tell you. <laughs> so well, uh yeah, so they, uh, they will let him find out when he watches it later. Good. Um, anyway. <laughs> with that um with that Fader fight that I saw, um Hader just couldn't see out of the eye out, out, out of the um out of the second round, his eye was swollen shut, so he just he just called it himself. He just couldn't see any out of his light, out of his eye. So he, they just, the doctors just kind of waved it off. But that was another, you know, pretty boring fight for uh, to watch live. And Tim, Tim, Tim was bashing him up though. Oh yeah, but if you if you look at the picture afterwards, you see uh, Fitter's eyes completely just swollen shut, and he just couldn't see. So the doctors just waved it off as uh, as he, you know, just to protect the fighter. But that was a good card. I got to see Arlovsky lose to uh, Karatanov by a nasty. Uh, Nasty uh, knockout, so that was good. This is a guy you gotta remember. Think about Fedor. Randy Couture left the UFC on a contract dispute because he wanted to fight Fedor. He was the heavyweight champion at the time, and he left the UFC at I think it was at the time he was about forty two or forty three years old, or or forty maybe forty five years old. I don't know. He was extremely old, and he was willing. That's how much he wanted to fight Fedor. Fedor was in his young. 30s, 31, 32 at the time. And there was big, there was a press conference and supposedly they were going to fight each other. And and, and Fedor, of course, did what Fedor did and, and took a fight with, uh, uh, I don't know, Jeff Munson or whoever instead. All right, we'll change gears again. Um, we'll go into some other names, big names in the UFC. The Diaz brothers. What do you guys have next for each of the Diaz brothers? All right, so I'm going to go on a five-minute breakdown of their record, just like I did of Fedor's. So, <laughs> um, well, obviously, obviously, um, Nate Diaz is a star. Now he said he had, he's not going to fight um, unless he gets Conor McGregor again, um, which I can understand. He's making millions of dollars to fight Conor McGregor. Um, he's been in the sport a long time. Um, if he decides to fight, I kind of came up with two opponents: one at 155, one at 170. Uh, 155. Um, you know, if if Dos Anjos beats or, or Dos Anjos, Rafael, uh, Tony Ferguson wins uh, wins their fight, they, they're in line for a title fight. Um, if Habib Nurmagomedov uh, beats uh, Michael Johnson, he's obviously in line for a title fight. So I don't really know um, who would get the uh, the first crack at light uh, light heavy uh, lightweight, excuse me. Um, but if Nurmagomedov doesn't get that fight, I think that's a fight um, that would make sense. Um, Nurmagomedov um, would be undefeated to be twenty three and zero. And um, they've their camps at forty kind of had some problems. They've they're both great trash talkers. I think that would be a pretty decent fight. And at one seventy, um, obviously there's you'd have to lower a little bit down the list because he doesn't have as many as wins. Uh, if you decide to go one seventy, I think uh, Gaslam Cerrone winner. I know he's already fought Cerrone, but I think that'd be a pretty good uh, matchup. And obviously Gaslam, if Gaslam beats Donald Cerrone, he instantly uh, moves up in popularity. So one of those for Nate. Um, and Nick, I mean, Nick, you've been hearing headlines. Everyone's calling Nick out. Um, I'll start with uh, 170. Um, Nick, Nick's, for some reason, Nick is so popular. Um, he hasn't really, I don't think he's accomplished much as Nate. But being that now Nate is a big name, I think instantly Nick um, gets a little bump. He knocked out Robbie Lowe a long time ago. I think that fight makes sense. Um, I think it would be a, a, a good rematch. Uh Get let Robbie Lawler get his revenge, and uh, and at, if he decided to fight at 185, he's fought there. Um, he'd have to get a pretty big name, and I think Vitor Belfort put two guys who've been in the sport a long time, have fought each other. I think that makes sense. Justin, who would you, who would you take before for Dave steals your steals your picks? <laughs> well, you steal my pick. That's you just took mine, but I got one other one that I thought of. But J Justin, you go first. Uh, no, I I like him matched up with Lawler. Um, I think it's it'd be a good thing for Lawler after what happened with Woodley just to, you know, get get back on track. I, I think it's a fight Lawler would win, definitely, um, as long as that chin isn't as damaged as we all – well, as I fear it might be. But I, I like the Robbie Lawler matchup for Nick. Um, as far as Nate, I mean, it's, you know, obviously Connor, you know, for the trilogy. I think that makes the most sense out of everything. I don't think he will fight until the trilogy happens. Um, outside of that, I think Donald, Donald Cerrone would be a real fun fight. You know, um, if Nate's all about the money now, 
But like he says, that's his money fight is Donald Cerrone if he's not fighting McGregor. See, um, I agree with that. I mean, every, every one of the ones you took, um, either Nate or Nick, I would say, like to go against Robbie Aller because they're both, you know. But I think then again, I would like to see, you know, Nick more just because of they had history, him and Lawler. But I don't think Nate's going to fight again. I agree till the till he gets the trilogy. And even then, it's like if they don't give it to him, he may just I mean, he may have enough money now to live comfortably the rest of his life. It's all he wants is the big money fights. So who else is there really for him to really fight besides Cerrone? But the problem with him and Cerrone now is they don't hate each other. They're, you know, they're cool with each other now. So they can't really hype it up as I hate you. You hate this like they did for UFC. Um, I forgot the number, but but he fought when Lesnar fought Overeem. He was the he was on that card, so they don't really have much animosity, so they can't really build it up as, oh, I hate you, and I'll flip your cowboy hat off, junk like that. So it doesn't really sell. But um, for Nick, you know, maybe have him go against Belfort, like you said, or maybe have him go against Silva again. That could be another um, option for him. But for Nate, I feel like it's McGregor or nothing for him because he's he's not going to take a fight against, um, you know, if he goes down to lightweight, he's not going to go against like. Diego Sanchez or Dustin Poirier because there's no money in those fights. So he cares about the money now. So it's just, it's literally McGregor or bust. And I, you may not see him ever fight again because he, you know, uh, Nate's a man of his word. So I, I mean, I'm not a big DS fan, but I feel like, you know, he's not going to fight anybody until he gets McGregor. I mean, he has no problem sitting down. He's still a young guy. He's got money in his pocket now. So what, you know, He's fought a lot in the UFC, so it's why not use what you've built up to to just do the money fights and just sit back and just relax. Yeah, imagine if McGregor wins the title. I could see them giving bumping Diaz and having the trilogy finishing for a title for the lightweight title. But Dana White is too hesitant to sign that fight. I mean, Dana White always lies to us where he says, "Oh, I'm not booking Alvarez McGregor. Alvarez will fight um, Nagamanov," and then boom, like a couple. A couple days later, a week later, and now he's fighting McGregor. So it's always like – he always tries to steer us in one direction, Dana White, which I never really – just be honest with the fans. The stuff the stuff leaks before you make the announcements anyway, which is what I feel like he's trying to stop. But he's always like, oh, you know, we're not doing the trilogy fight. That will you know, that won't happen. And then probably like after this fight, boom, they'll do the trilogy fight. All right, from there we can move into Max Holloway. Uh Scheduled the fight, Anthony Pettis at 206. Uh, Holloway's guy who says he's really looking forward to the fight. Um, he's on a nine-fight win streak, and he's he's acting like it's just, you know, uh, like they do in football. They're, he's just trying to go 1-0 and this week. Um, he seems to have that mentality going into this Pettis fight. But um, the quote from him I saw is he's beyond stoked, is what he said, to fight Anthony Pettis and go stand and trade with him. How do you guys feel about this fight? Do you think Pettis is back at a level where this will be a close one, or do you think Holloway takes care of business? Um, um, I don't think Pettis is quite there yet. I mean, mentally, after losing the title and then losing three in a row, I mean, including that three in a row he lost the title, that that wears down on your psyche. You know, that like that's kind of tough to come back from, losing three in a row, because then you have to reevaluate your whole game. Maybe you got to switch camps, you know, get a new striking coach. I know he picked up a win against um, Oliveri, but that was – I had a 1-1 going into the third. So I don't think he's quite there yet to where he can compete. But, I mean, Holloway, when his last fight with Lamas was incredible. So if he does the same game plan against Pettis, I think we're all in for a hell of a fight. And um, this is one I think the UFC fans really need to watch is definitely Anthony Pettis versus Max Holloway. Yeah, I, I absolutely love this fight. Um, I remember a couple of weeks ago we were talking about the John Lineker, John Dotson, and I said it was just a perfect matchup. And, and and this one I think falls right in that same sense. When they when they announced this fight, I was so excited. Um, Max Holloway, in my opinion, is the most complete 145 pounder right now. And I, I actually think I think he, he would beat uh, Jose Aldo and, and I think he'd have a re, he'd have a real good shot at beating Conor McGregor in a rematch uh, if they fought at one uh, at one forty five. Um, and Anthony Pettis, I mean, yeah, he 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 had some moments uh, against Charles Oliveira.